It isn't too often a car is launched that, at a stroke, manages to make all of its rivals look way behind the curve, but Honda achieved it with this one. Built in Britain, launched in 2005, and further smartened in the improved form we're testing here, the 8th generation Civic performs something of a minor miracle for its maker, transforming the image of this long-running family hatchback model line from being something you'd see in Eastbourne to being a car with Star Trek style perfectly at your home anywhere from Knightsbridge to New York. It's still practical and reliable, of course, it's just that thankfully, those virtues no longer define this Honda in the way that they did. The motor industry has doubtless seen braver automotive gambles than that delivered by this eighth generation Honda Civic in 2005. But offhand, I can't think of any. It's easy to forget now that prior to this model's arrival, um, Honda Civics were cars largely bought by older people. The average customer age, a grey-haired 58. Alienating these people with something futuristic was a dangerous thing to do, but Honda did it anyway. This car making not only its predecessor look dull, but also pulling the same trick on virtually every other alternative in the focus-sized family hatchback class. Even today, with a completely new set of rivals dominating this segment, most competitors seem stylistically staid and conservative by comparison. To try and keep the car competitive in the face of more recently launched opposition, Honda offered up a few aesthetic nips and tucks as their futuristic family hatch near the end of its model life. But none of these are significant enough to affect its appeal one way or the other. If you're considering this car, it'll be because you appreciate great design, sporty looks and high technology. And not because one of these will be a comfortable place to park your tartan slippers. All of which means that in just one model generation, this Civic's transformation is complete. Take a seat behind the wheel and you'll find a cabin that's as driver focused as ever. Though the engine start button is rather unnecessary, it does kind of fit in with the whole high-tech feel. And punching it releases an agreeably rorty engine note that cashes the check promised by the sporty looks. Now, uh, it's the 1.840 PS petrol unit that I'm driving here. Uh, it's an engine that uh, claims to deliver the performance of a 2-litre with the efficiency of a 1.6, and that's pretty much how it pans out in practice. Rest to 60, occupying 8.9 seconds on the way to a top speed of 122 miles an hour. A substantial 4 seconds and 12 miles an hour faster than the entry-level 100 PS 1.4 litre petrol variant. Buyers of the three-door Civic body style get an additional petrol alternative under the bonnet, uh, a rorty 201 PS 2 litre unit uh, fitted to the potent Civic Type R hot hatch. But it's the five-door body style that we're focusing on here. And uh, in this shape, buyers have only one more option under the bonnet. That's a, a 2.2 litre ICTDI diesel with 140 PS. Now, this engine uh, delivers an almost identical set of performance figures to the petrol 1.8, but thanks to its much greater pulling power and low down torque, it feels quicker in everyday life. On the move in this car, you're first struck by the near perfect weighting of the brake and clutch pedals and the lovely snickety precision of the six speed manual gearbox. There's uh, an I-shift semi-automatic option on the 1.4 and a full automatic on the 1.8 if you really don't like it. But whatever your transmission choice, it quickly becomes obvious when you drive this Honda that it's an easy car to use. If there is a problem, it's that it isn't quite such an easy car to see out of. These front windscreen A-pillars are a little thick, but the real issue surrounds rearward visibility. The, uh, the way that the spoiler bisects the rear windscreen can sometimes make it difficult to accurately see following cars. But that's something that you do quickly get used to as we found ourselves running this car on a long-term test. Perhaps more of an issue is the slightly unsettled ride that you sometimes get 
of the porous surfaces, a legacy of Honda's refusal with this car to adopt the kind of sophisticated multi-link suspension system that other rivals have boasted for some time. Ironically, the previous generation version of this car had exactly that, but the layout was ditched in this version uh, in the interest of space efficiency. Now, many owners will see the trade-off as having been worthwhile. This car is, after all, fine on smooth surfaces and highways, and thanks to the low levels of wind noise delivered by the slippery shape, uh, it's uh, an accomplished long-distance cruiser. It's also uh, a surprisingly entertaining and rewarding back road uh, car to drive as well. Plus, the brakes are excellent. Even today, with many more recently launched models jostling for space in this car's market sector, the sharp creases, the wedge shape, the recessed rear door handles and the split rear screen all guarantee that this Civic will stand out amongst a sea of more cautiously designed Golfs, Astras and Focuses. Improvements to this enhanced model include a cleaner, less fussy Civic Type R inspired front grille, um, as well as uh, a range of smarter paint finishes and sharper alloy wheel designs. Nothing though to significantly water down those back to the future looks. It's a tad ironic then that underneath all this Star Trek styling, line mechanicals that in some cases are actually less groundbreaking than those of this car's also conservative predecessor. The most obvious example here I've already mentioned in our driving experience section, the lack of the old seventh generation Civic's sophisticated multi-link suspension system, deleted not as you might reasonably assume on cost-cutting grounds, but in the interests of space saving. This car's simpler struts and torsion beam arrangement, along with the clever location of the fuel tank under the floor just behind the front seats, frees up a very generous 485 litre boot. And that's over 100 litres more than you get in a comparable Ford Focus. And what's more, the area available is deep, wide and practical to use, thanks to this split level floor. Need more? then push forward the split folding rear seats to reveal a long flat 1326 litre loading area but that's not the best bit the little touch i really like is the way that these seat bases can be flipped up against their backrests uh, cinema style to uh, provide an area for the carriage of tall, slim items, um, plants from the garden centre perhaps, or a child's mountain bike. Now, if you're using these rear seats more conventionally for passengers, then you'll find that as, uh, as usual with this class of car, three adults would be a bit of a squash on the back seat. But two can be accommodated very comfortably, even on longer journeys, with decent standards of uh, knee, uh, leg and headroom despite those coupe style looks. And at the wheel, well, despite the best efforts of the men and women on Honda's UK Swindon production line, what we don't have here is a cabin whose uh, fit and finish is quite up to the standards of a Volkswagen Golf or a clutch of other more recently launched rivals. Curiously though, this isn't something that's very obvious at first glance. So carried away are you, on first acquaintance at least, by a dash layout that's uh, as high-tech and daring as the exterior looks would lead you to expect. This side of a motor show concept car, I can't think of another co cockpit that's so willfully futuristic with its uh, dual plane architecture, um, its mix of analog and digital, indeed contrasting stars of digital instrumentation, and to say the least, uh, idiosyncratic switch gear. Um, you view the speed through uh, just above the steering wheel rim, which might be a slight problem for taller drivers who can't get this seat low enough to properly view it. But there's no issue with the clear and neatly positioned instrumentation that you look through the wheel at. Uh, graphs and dials showing revs, temperature and fuel levels. It's all very driver centric, something you either like or you don't. So, for example, the air conditioning switch gear is perfectly placed for the person in control, 
but that inevitably makes the switches and buttons slightly more difficult to access for the front seat passenger, who sits facing nothing but a conventional and not especially spacious glove box. For me though, it's a balance of priorities that I'm quite happy with. Although I'm not sure that the uh, button placement is always ideal. The button, for example, that operates the heated uh, rear window and mirrors, you have to reach behind the wheel to get at it. Um, but uh, the main thing is that the driving position itself could hardly be better, aided by a rake and reach adjustable steering wheel and uh, a very supportive driver's seat, classily trimmed in Alcantara with leather side bolsters in the plusher model that I've got here. The Civic Signature drilled metal pedals deserve a mention too, first for being beautifully over the top and second for being almost perfectly positioned. Now prices look more competitive than they used to be against obvious Focus and Astra class competitors. Most Civic customers, mindful of the fact that the premium to go from the three-door version of this car to this five-door body style is only around £600, opt for the five-door. So that's the body style we're going to focus on here. And for that, you're looking at a price span somewhere between £16,500 and £23,500, with plenty of dealer offers around to reduce those figures still further. You'll need a £1,000 premium on top of the cost of the entry-level 1.4-litre VTEC petrol hatchback model if you want to get the Rortier Sportier 1.8 that I've been driving here, and a further £1,500 on top of that if you want to go for the 2.2-litre uh, ICTDI diesel. So how do these kinds of figures compare to obvious family hatchback class competitors? Well, if you take the entry level 1.4 litre petrol VTEC, you're looking at paying just a little more than you would for equivalent versions of uh, family hatchback class mainstream models like Ford's Focus or Vauxhall's Astra. But uh, when it comes to more premium rivals, like an equivalent version of the Volkswagen Golf, the Honda has a substantial price advantage. Further up the Civic range though, in terms of power versus value, there's little to touch this Civic. I couldn't find another family hatch class rival that could offer petrol customers 140 brake horsepower at anything like this Civic 1.8 VTEX asking price. And the same was true when I came to look for alternatives to the 2.2 uh, litre ICTDI diesel, at least in terms of competitors able to match its 140 brake horsepower output. Whichever Civic model you choose, three or five door with 1.4 or 1.8 litre I VTEC petrol power or indeed the 2.2-litre uh, I CTDI diesel, you should find it to be decently equipped. All models come with alloy wheels, all-round electric windows, air conditioning, a refrigerated glove box and an AUX in socket. Uh, it'd be nice to see a wiper on the rear window though. And the safety standards remain on a par with the best in the class. With its rigid body structure and subframes, recessed pedals, double pre-tensioners on the front seat belts, Isofix child seat mounting points and uh, anti-whiplash head restraints as well as twin front and side airbags. It's not surprising that this Civic scored a full five stars in Euro NCAP safety tests for front and side impacts. Plus it got three stars for pedestrian protection and four stars for child safety protection. And Honda's VSA stability control system is standard across the range. Given that this Civic dates back to 2005, you wouldn't expect it to be amongst the class leaders uh, in the family hatchback sector when it comes to fuel consumption and emissions, and it isn't. Nevertheless, uh, customers for the entry-level 1.4-litre petrol VTEC variant should find the uh, combined fuel consumption return of 47.9 miles to the gallon uh, quite adequate. Emissions for this variant are uh, 134 grams per kilometre and if you want to improve that still further there's the option of Honda's high-tech six-speed i-shift automated manual transmission which returns 132 grams per kilometre of CO2. Uh, with this petrol 1.8 of course you have to pay a little for your pleasures. Uh, it manages uh, 42.8 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and puts out 152 grams per kilometre of CO2. 
For the record, the only other engine option in the five door body style, the 2.2 litre ICTDI diesel manages 53.3 uh, miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and puts out 139 grams per kilometre of CO2. But what you might lose against obvious rivals in terms of frugality and emissions, you're likely to make back when the time comes to sell. Residual values over a typical three year ownership period are after all up to 10% better than those of a comparable Ford Focus. Uh, servicing costs are surprisingly affordable too and insurance groupings, are, well they're not too bad, ranging between 12 and 23 for the five door models on the one to 50 uh, insurance grouping scale. Overall then, if you can afford the upfront asking price, you'll be buying into a car that won't be too exorbitant to run. Now, there aren't too many cars that can, like this one, go a whole model generation with little need for change. But then there aren't too many cars as aesthetically ahead of their time as this eighth generation Honda Civic. Stylistically and from a packaging point of view, it raised the bar in its sector, encouraging customers to expect more from a conventional focus size family hatchback. Though what lies beneath the futuristic bodywork is nothing like as high tech and the cabin doesn't feel of German quality, the engines on offer are a characterful bunch delivering on the promise of the sporty looks. There are, it's true, more refined choices in this class and certainly more luxurious feeling ones. But, and this is significant, all this time after this model's original 2005 launch, there still isn't another car in this segment that's as interesting as this one in the approach it takes to family hatchback motoring. Honda, as ever, is still a brand ahead of its time.